Ja, det kom ett förslag från kommittén att jag skulle göra några skulpturer där och på så sätt så blev ju projektet utvidgat och jag fick ju de här som ytterligare ett, ett inslag i min rundkörselhund. Jag tror att de här kan bli ganska populära genstande på Petern som rundkörselhund. Ja. My name is David Price Jones and I'm very glad to be here because we're defending free speech and that is the foundation of our civilization and it's under threat from people who don't understand what I've just said and it's also under threat from people who don't like our civilization and wish us to change and we won't if we can't defend ourselves now when can we Den 14 februari är ju viktig för mig för tid man bör uppmärksamma att de tröster som Salman Rushdie har fått är fortfarande någonting som är aktuellt och som också har drabbat mig. Free speech remains as important today as it was 25 years ago and the right of cartoonists to satirize is an essential right of all free societies. I don't expect too much. I am glad being in wonderful Copenhagen, but having expectation is the best way to disappoint them. So I want to see whether there is still something rotten in Denmark, or maybe, I hope at least, things have improved since my last visit to Denmark when I met Kurt Westergaard. Even though Rusty won a battle, you can still read his book, still buy it, it is still being published. You could put it less, thus that the war has been in the longer perspective, not perhaps definitively lost, but there is today now a climate of fear. Many people have internalized the fact that so we are in a different situation than we were a quarter of a century ago. For me, uh, it's very uh, important that we are going to have this debate today because it's the 25th year of the fatwa against uh, Rushdie. This evening, uh, we will talk about different topics and we have a distinguished uh, panel. It's also a very large panel, so I remind uh, our honored speakers, please do not sort of speak for more than five minutes. But let me introduce to you Mr. David Price Jones, who is senior editor of uh, the magazine National uh, Review. 1979 was a very important date. Um, I think it will go down in the history books as important as 1789 and 1917. A new ideology was released in the world by Ayatollah Khomeini. And the fatwa was something we hadn't seen before. I can't think of a previous example of a head of state calling by name for the assassination of a person not in his jurisdiction but under in another state. Hitler and Stalin were very enthusiastic murderers, but they didn't single people out by name. So this was a declaration of war. Now, there have been two possible attacks, um, two possible responses, if you like. One is, from within, people saying, oh, Rushdie shouldn't have done it. He was provoking. He was doing, um, uh, making trouble on purpose. So, for instance, Hugh Trevor Roper, the professor of modern history at Oxford, and a liberal person and an intelligent man actually wrote an article at that time to say he hoped that Rushdie would meet uh, a Muslim in a dark alley on a dark night. We have a situation where free speech is under threat in Britain, in India, in Pakistan, in many, many countries across the world, in the Middle East, as David pointed out, by uh, the leaders of uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood rules, I think, five states in the Middle East, or has just been thrown out of power in one of them in, in Egypt, but um, has considerable hold on the Middle East. But its brother organization, the Jamaat Islami, is very powerful across South Asia. And that organization was involved with militias that committed genocide in 1971 during the War of Liberation in Bangladesh, when Bangladesh came into existence as a separate state. I investigated some British Muslims who were involved with killings at that time and were also involved in mobilizing in the 80s against satanic verses. So there's a very compl complex story of people who were already in, had committed mass violence. And I want us to really hold this in our minds. We're not just talking about the right of free speech. We're talking about protecting a right 
which if it's not protected, will lead to people who believe in murdering their opponents, not just in targeted assassinations, but in their thousands. So among the people who were killed by the militias was a professor of Bengali literature who was killed simply because of his love of Tagore. We interviewed a survivor of the torture center who heard him being tortured and taunted for loving uh, a Nobel Prize winning uh, writer um, and great human being who wrote the national anthems of India and Bangladesh. His words were banned and censored under the Pakistani military. I don't think this is a clash of civilizations. It's a clash of civilizational values, but people who hold those values exist in many countries across the world. They're young people in Britain who are fighting the political orthodoxies that keep silent about these things. Many of them are young atheists and free thinkers. Some of them are ex-Muslims. And many of them are actually believers who have been involved in uh, mass movements for accountability for the war crimes that took place in 71. While the European populations have become more skeptical to legislation against blasphemy or even racism, legislation against hate speech remains as strong as ever. What countless publicists, directors, CEOs, writers, artists, com columnists, printing houses, subcontractors, etc., fear, and fear for good reasons, is to end up in a courtroom, national, federal, or European. Ending up there in the courtroom is an expressway to exposure, in particular exposure to radical Islamists and jihadists. Anti-hate laws have become a new and subtle way of artistic, spiritual, and political enslavement in the multiculturalist societies of the West. By criminalizing hate speech, might becomes right, we becomes you, our concerns become your concerns. The hate speech ideology of today is the most thriving form of collectivism in this most non-collectivist world we're, we're living in. Hate speech legislation represents a new march into the brave new world according to the prophets of political correctness. But in effect, it is the end of discussion. Am I the only one in the room who uh, who is speculating now about total freedom of speech means that we won't have to sit here today because then fatwas would be totally okay. <laughs> Just wondering, total freedom of speech means that a fatwa is okay. No. Well, the fatwa we're talking about is Khomeini putting a price mm. on Rushdie's oh, head. But he's not killing anybody. I, I think Henry is inciting Henry murder with, with the backing of God. I mean, it doesn't start with the killing of someone, being intimidated, and not doing some things because of being intimidated is bad enough. What I want to point out is the whole thing is first imbalance, and second, a matter of fear. Maybe you remember two or three weeks ago, there was a statement issued by one of the many United Nations human rights organizations telling the Catholic Church they have not only, the Vatican should not only deal with the child molesters, which is perfectly justified, the Catholic Church should also give up some of their dogmas and accept homosexuals and accept uh, priests who want to marry. I was waiting for day, two days, three days a week for a similar statement directed at the Ayatollahs in Iran telling them not to stone adulterers and telling them not to hang homosexuals on cranes and also telling them to stop the nice habit of marrying young virgins at the age of 11. So why does the United Nations body of this Human Rights Committee, why do they deal only with the sins of the Catholic Church? Because for a very simple reason, they're not afraid of any consequences. It's a culture of fear which was instilled in the public discourse during the last 25 years. And the culture of fear is not decreasing, it is increasing. So, uh, well, this uh, war is certainly going on, possibly for another 25 years, but uh, I refuse to say that it has been uh, lost, as, uh, as uh, Kenan Malik suggests. Uh, the fact that we are here to, today, this evening, Discussing uh, uh, this um, topic uh, is a proof to that, I think. Uh, 
So there, there's still some resistance going on. And uh, if I may, I would like to show you uh, also in today's paper, we have, uh, <laughs> in fact, a Mohammed cartoon. Uh, we have been covering the visit of the French uh, caricaturist Plantu. And here you see it. Uh, two bearded men. One of them uh, bears a resemblance to Leonardo da Vinci. <coughs> And, uh, and there's this uh, man in a, with a turban and a beard, uh, a very prophet-like apparition, I should say, um, who is uh, completely shocked because he thinks that uh, the painter is painting uh, God himself. And Leonardo says, no, uh, <laughs> this is not a blasphemy. I'm, I'm just making a, an auto-portrait. Could you please uh, give me some space here? Space here, get off my back. <laughs> yeah. Talking about change, I, um, I do have an important message. Uh, really a sensation of uh, changing attitudes. Uh, and that is actually due to the small sculptures here, uh, which I made. And uh, we have to remember that in Sweden, the country, if you go east, um, they have, um, they have the, the, the rule that you cannot publish uh, a picture of the of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, and, and, and not at all uh, the Prophet uh, Muhammad as a dog, uh, and of course not as a roundabout dog either. Uh, and that has been so for many years, for many years, I mean, the Prophet uh, uh, rules. When, when, um, when the newspaper express and uh, they uh, saw about this meeting here and that there should be these sculptures, uh, one, uh, one journalist, he phoned me and uh, asked me, do you have a picture of this? Uh, because I've seen a picture, but we cannot, we have no right to use it. And I, and I sent him, and, after, and, and he said, oh, nice pictures, I was very glad you sent them. And then uh, I started thinking and said, what, 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 he will do, I have, I've seen this before. The happy journalist say, well, no problem, no problem. And then the editor says, uh, no deal, no deal, no chance, no chance. But this time it actually went through and it was published. Actually, they published this picture, I mean, an insulting picture of the prophet as a dog. So something has actually changed. Even in, in Sweden, I mean, this is a sensation of it. So, um, so something do happen now and then in this case. Yeah. <laughs>